Hello friends. It's been a long time since I've done an update parasite life video. Um, so I have taken a step back from trying to cure the parasites to deal with some other health issues that I've been having. Um, I finally was able to get insurance and I was struggling finding a new doctor. Mine retired and um, I went to a really young guy and had a really not a very good experience. He told me um, he couldn't deal with all my problems all at once. He was going to have to see me and we address one each time. And I'm thinking that could be years and very long. So um, he had tests that he ordered, but he didn't order the tests that I knew I needed to prove there'd been more damage or whatever. And so I never got calls back with the test results. Uh, they didn't schedule another appointment. So I called the office looking to get my records sent up to a different doctor somebody suggested in a larger city. And they were like, we can't give you the results because the doctor and nurse haven't looked at them. I'm like, it's been a week and a half. Like nobody called me, nobody's done anything. The results were in that day. So um, I just figured out how to download them on on an app and sent them up. That doctor hasn't taken new patients in five years. Apparently this woman I met had told me to try getting in. So I went to uh, one of the doctors I worked with as uh, an RN at the hospital and um, he was wonderful to take me and um, he immediately ordered the tests that I knew that needed to be run at the appointment. I, I didn't even fill out my applications before uh, I was called in the nurse pre the nurse that did the pre meeting thing had everything down when he came in it was like less than two minutes later uh, very organized very scheduled on time I didn't have to wait a long time in the room or at the in the office and it was just a really wonderful experience and so he ordered so there were some lab tests and they showed abnormalities which I knew they would um, and so then they, they, he ordered follow-up, uh, tests and scheduled out a new appointment. So I went for the tests. Um, they called me the next day and said, Hey, the tests were abnormal. He'll discuss it with you on the appointment you have scheduled in a couple weeks. Uh, in the meantime, you know, go get your other tests run. And so, um, I, when I went in to talk to the first doctor, it was about my liver, uh, my thyroid and my lungs. So I've had issues with all of those in the past. Um, the, my old doctor tried me on Synthroid and that did not work. I just swell up and feel toxic and it was not good. So then I lost my insurance. So this doctor then put me on, um, he tried me first on level thyroxine and um, I took it for two weeks. I gained 10 pounds <laughs> and I laughed because when you get the from the pharmacist, it's like, this is not a weight loss drug. Do not take this to lose weight. And I'm like, all it did was make me starving hungry. And then I had heart palpitations. I had, uh, I couldn't sleep. I swelled up my, I was retaining water. I literally did gain 10 pounds in just over two weeks. And, um, you know, I'd been the same weight for five or six years, depending until this, my daughter's wedding. And then I gained a few. And then this last month I gained 10 in two weeks. And, um, I, I had no sleep for almost three nights. And then I woke up and my skin was burning. So I stopped taking that thyroid medication figuring it's not working. I then looked up the medication side effects and like laughed because they were like everything I had was a side effect of this medication. So I had a new, another appointment coming up, but I was also getting these other tests. So the first test he sent me for was the, um, lung, let's see, the liver, um, fatty liver ultrasound. And when I went, the ultrasound tech, I was somebody I, I knew not real well, but I knew him and he's like, Oh, yours looks fine. Mine's worse than yours. And I'm like, yeah, but my eyes turn yellow. And if I were eat any fats at all, they get worse and they get really dark in color and you can hardly see them in pictures unless I'm standing out in natural light. And, um, so it, anyway, I got a call from the doctor's office saying, yes, you have fatty liver. Um, plus my liver 
my liver tests, the laboratory tests, I had two abnormal liver function tests. So, and the weird thing is, is I had those tests done before when my eyes first started turning yellow years ago and they came back fine and now they're not fine. So obviously it's gotten worse, which I knew I had. And then, um, I, I had the, um, we tried, so I had the pulmonary function test and he couldn't find the results for one of them when he, um, was looking at my results. He just saw the first one. He's like, Oh you, yeah, you're fine. And I said, yeah, but that was the first one. There's another one. And then there was this, I want to do another one to show that there's problems. So even when I went, they're like, yeah, your lungs are, you're still fine. You, you can breathe without, you know, you can still hold your breath or whatever. And I'm like, yes, but I can feel a difference. If I am exercising or whatever, I only have half a breath. Like I get to a point and then there's no air exchange whatsoever. Like singing, I can't hold a note out. And it's less and less and less and less. So when they did, they helped me find one of the, another guy came in and helped us find that second test results. It's just they changed over to a different system. So I I lined up all three and you could see clearly the total volume and other like there's been degradation. I also had my brother's a genius and he he uh, helped me figure out a way to test. Uh, the air in my house because I knew there's a problem. So I went through a month of testing for methane and proved that there was some kind of methane type coming into the house because my house is so airtight, it was actually being pulled in from the sewers in the basement. And then uh, after I put some oil down the drains down there, um, we tested, he got a Geiger counter hooked up to an air sensor and um, proof that there's radon in the house, which I figured there was. Um, and then I spoke with the radon national hotline and figured out that my house is so airtight, the mitigation is probably not the thing for me. So um, I'm getting looking into getting a air exchange fan put into my house. Um, as it is, I use fans currently during the day to blow out the air and blow in fresh air. But um, on a cold day, that's not working. In the summertime, I have a swamp cooler, which is great, but um, I still need to find a way to recycle the air in the basement is the problem where radon gets into the house. So that has been going on. <laughs> so I'm just telling you all these things that explain why I haven't been doing the parasite stuff. So I uh, met with my doctor again after all those tests and he says, okay, yeah, you've got some lung damage. We don't know why. Let's put, send you to a pulmonologist. Uh, liver, clearly there's some fatty liver. Let's send you to a liver specialist and thyroid. I, I, we tried. He then ordered some level, uh, let's see, um, Lyothyronine, which is a, C, a T3 versus a T4. The first two I tried were T4, and this is a T3. Um, I did feel a little bit better on it, not more energy, but less crappy, <laughs> if that makes more sense. The other one made me feel crappy almost from the start. This one I didn't feel as crappy, but once again, I started to gain weight. So I've gained another four pounds. I mean, I'm sure you guys can probably tell I've gained another four pounds on top of the 10 I gained before on that medication for two weeks. I was on this one for almost two weeks and I gained another four pounds or so. It's very frustrating when you're trying to lose weight and the medication to help you lose weight makes you gain weight. So I stopped taking that one as well. I'm going to see the um, endocrinologist and see what he suggests because I think it's other I think it's like my adrenals and some other things going on, not just the thyroid. I think there's a goiter, but I also think there's other things. So with that, uh, somebody suggested the Garcina Cambogia. <laughs> uh, while I was uh, getting my thyroid medication, they were saying this really helped them. So I've tried that on and off because I've been trying new things. I didn't want, I wanted to know which one was helping. And so far I can't tell because I've been trying to not do them all at the same time. Um, I, you can tell it's almost full still. I've done, uh, you can't see it, but um, I've, I've tried it, but you're supposed to take it three times a day without food, plus this thyroid medication you take without food half an hour, and I'm taking um, some other 
stuff that you have to take either side of half an hour of food. So I'm like half an hour, eat, half an hour, take one, half an hour, take one, half an hour, take one. <laughs> so it's been a little crazy. I've been doing all these things. Um, so then my migraines. So it's spring and there's pressure storms and, and whatever, and I get migraines. And so last week there was a really bad one. I woke up in the middle of it. Jump back. When I met with the doctor the first time, the young doctor, he gave me some prenatal <laughs> nausea medication and said, try that. And I'm like, yeah, but I still have a migraine. I mean, like if I'm not throwing up, I still feel crappy. I can't do much with that much of a headache. So, um, talk to the pharmacist. He says, there's nothing migrainey about this medication. It's for pregnant women. And then later on, my friend works at his office and she's like, he only takes pregnant women. He probably doesn't know any medications to give you. He's just, he's my daughter's age. He's just barely out of medical school. So when I went to my friend, the doctor that I used to work with, um, he had some trial size of a, a med called Nurtec and it's dissolves in the mouth. So even when I'm nauseous, I'm not going to throw it up because it just dissolves. So that way, even if I do throw up, it's still in the system. So he gave me four of those and I had quite a few headaches last month and, um, they were gone before my next appointment a month later, but I was quite nauseous. I took them. I laid down for 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and it took the edge off. So I wasn't throwing up and I could function. I still had a little bit of a headache breakthrough. And then after four hours to six hours, I could feel the headache much more coming back, but at least I was still functional. And then by that point, I'm not throwing up. So I could take some Tylenol or Sudafed or something that would help keep it down because you can only take that once every 24 hours. So then I uh, went to, I said, hey, that one didn't quite cover it, but I liked it because I didn't throw up. And he says, I said, is there a different one that's similar to that? And he said, yeah, there's risotriptan. Uh, riz risotriptan? Risotriptan. So he gave me this one and he said, you can take them simultaneously because they work on different actions. Um, and so... I went to get the prescription filled and my insurance did not pay for Nurtec and uh, it had to be pre-authorized and then it was rejected because I guess it's a newer drug and it's expensive. So I was sorely disappointed after this happened. So I, I thought, well, maybe this one will work and it's approved and so I'll get it. So I get this resistant nine tablets. So you can take up to... One, and then if you still have a headache, you take a second one, and then you, a couple hours later, if you still have it, you can take a third one. There's only nine in here. That would be three headaches, <laughs> the kind of headaches that I get, you know, bad. And, um, but I thought, I'm going to still try it. <clears throat> so I woke up in the middle of the night last Monday, Monday, it was Monday morning, um, woke up in the middle of the night really bad headache and I was hoping I could sleep it off and maybe the storm had passed the pressure or whatever. So I went back to sleep for a few minutes, woke up massive headache. Um, I knew it, it was going to be a bad day. So I only had this rise of trip done. So I took one and within a half an hour I was puking really hard. And then I took another one and was puking even harder. Like I haven't thrown up dry heave like that. Um, I, I, I hurt my shoulder and I hurt my ribs on the left side. Like for days I was sore because I vomited so hard and so violently. And, um, it was always within a half an hour of me taking this. And so I will not be taking the rest of these <laughs> ever. I was so sick. Oh, it was awful. I mean, I know it was migraine vomiting. It wasn't like I had the flu or something. It was, and, and so after I vomited the second time of, with that, I took what I normally take, which is Tylenol, Sudafed, and Coke. So I just downed as much Coke as I could um, and a Sudafed and a Tylenol. And then I was still super nauseous and I was worried I was going to vomit those up. So I actually took the nausea medication <laughs> for pregnant women because I was so sick and I had vomited so violently and I thought I cannot do that again. I am so sore. So <laughs> that, I don't know whether it helped or not, but I was so done with vomiting. So I, 
I went to the doctor's office and I said, can you please contact the insurance company again and see if they'll pay for Nurtec because I just can't deal with all this vomiting. <laughs> TMI, I am sure, but all of that is to explain why I have not been trying new parasite medications <laughs> and explain why I keep getting heavier and heavier. My doctor's like, just go get stomach surgery. And I'm like, I don't want to get stomach surgery because that doesn't solve the problem. I want to, I want to figure out what the thigh, what it is that's causing the problem. That's just like a band-aid. I, I feel like I've always been able to lose weight and I've always figured out health issues on my own and not had to resort to anything like that. And I also do believe it's the parasites because um, with the leaky gut, I'm not assimilating anything. And the, with the fatty liver, I'm not assimilating anything. And I think my body feels like it's starving. 30% of your food intake, it needs to be fat. You have to have some kind of fat. And I feel like I crave fats, fatty things like cheese and ice cream and those kind of fatty things because I think my body isn't assimilating the fat so it feels like it's starving so I think then I eat the fat and then it just goes on my liver and my eye you know wherever and I just I'm not assimilating what I'm eating let's just put it that way so I take literally almost two handfuls of vitamins and herbs in the mornings <laughs> and I take them every other day every third day because I don't want to get toxic with the MTHFR factor which means you can't get rid of excess in your body. So even if it's a good thing, there's too much, you become toxic on it. So what I'm still have been doing with the parasites is I still put rosemary in my shampoo and conditioner, rosemary oil, and I shake it up and then I use it to keep them out of my head. I still bleach my hair every three, four weeks to kind of keep them down. I have noticed there are worse than ever and they are now causing sores in my hairline and more irritating in the hairline. And so I actually, last week I was so, ir it was so irritated, um, about a week after I bleached it, um, that I actually just put diatomaceous earth in my hair <laughs> just everywhere and just kept adding diatomaceous earth for like four days just to try and kill them down because it was a mess so yes I'm still dealing with them it's still hard but that's how I'm dealing with it I'm still using diatomaceous earth um, on the air hairline in the groin area I'm trying to keep them down there as well I still feel them on the pelvic floor quite a bit burrowing around there's um, and also I've been feeling a lot more um, larger worms because I haven't taken anything to kill them off in a long time They've gotten larger and I can feel the longer ones burrowing through my uh, liver area, uh, across out of my um, colon, um, stomach area. And then there's always one down in that pelvic floor groin area that lays its eggs in that hairline. And then I um, haven't felt as many larger ones in my neck, spine, head until just recently again and then um i'm still getting them in my teeth there's that black line right there there's the one over here and i can feel them burrowing in and the teeth are getting darker especially this one as they burrow into the roots of the teeth so <laughs> what i have been doing is just trying to get medical attention just get back to the basics of taking care of everything else that's going wrong while I um, see some specialists and see if I can figure out the rest of this. So um, hopefully, prayers that they can figure it out. In the meantime, I've been taking um, my vitamins every couple of days. I have been taking more B12, um, excuse me, gummies just to assimilate, like have more energy along with the apricot pits. Um, I take, uh, when I'm tired, I'll take a couple of these. It's like a adrenaline Coke kind of a feeling. Um, and then I'll take a couple of these um, each day when I'm starting to wind down in the afternoon, like right now. Um, I thought I would try elderberry. I've never tried it before. Um, I haven't noticed anything exciting. I'm about halfway through the bottle, but... Um, and I, this is my second bottle of zinc and I have to say, I did, my kids, grandkids were here and they've been sick. Um, and I 
you know, people have been around sick and have a cough or whatever from not getting fully over COVID or whatever, but I have been taking this regularly and I haven't gotten it. So I think this is worth it. So this was my second bottle. I gave the last of it to my grandkids when they were here because they all ended up with a cold, but I um, went and got another one and you can see I've been taking it. So that's good. And then um, I've been having really massive amounts of heartburn, um, not heartburn acid stomach and I guess it would be considered heartburn um after vomiting that valve got stuck open and this has happened I've had a lot of vomiting this year with the storms there's been really bad storms and I've had a lot so what happens is I vomit this valve gets stuck open I have to go find somebody to close it for me um and so that the acid doesn't come up so a couple last month I woke up and I literally had a volcano of stomach acid coming into my mouth like yeah. I'll wake up with stomach acid or my own spit in my throat quite often. Um, and I don't sleep on my back if I can help it because I will stop breathing and I do choke on my own spit. <laughs> and so, um, but I have never before experienced stomach acid, just like voluminous amounts of stomach acid coming up. And I woke up and it was like literally just about to come out of my mouth. It was really scared me. I couldn't breathe because I had this <laughs> moment coming up of a stomach acid and um I went to out of town on a, a road trip to visit some cousins who were visiting from the east coast and um for a funeral and I my sister met us for dinner I was meeting them for dinner and um she said she had the exact same experience recently as well with the stomach acid coming up and I've never heard of anybody having it happen like that. And, um, she said it was like a volcano coming up into her throat. So she told me about some cell salts and some, um, Nux Vomica. <laughs> she said that it's helped her with her stomach acid problem coming up so I don't know if it's the kombucha I'm drinking which is kind of like a vinegary um I've been taking plenty of probiotics but I haven't been taking prebiotics so I'm going to try taking prebiotics um and I I have some medication that I bought from Australia for parasites but it has side effects where it can cause the parasites to go into the eyes and with my eye issues, I, um, I ordered it and then I just haven't felt right to take it with the problems I'm already having. So I'm hoping to be able to fix some of the problems I'm having and then try that medication that's uh, pa anti-parasitic uh, medication out of Australia. So um, I feel like I haven't made updates and I've had a couple people write some rude comments <laughs> about how I should be dead if I had these parasites because they would eat me whatever and that I'm killing myself by trying new things so if you're a hater don't bother writing a comment because I will just delete it <laughs> so <laughs> and, and so many people like you don't have a parasite I'm like okay then what do you what was diagnosed what was that eight inch worm what are the four inch worms I sent and what are the <laughs> like just go away and leave me alone haters so um that's partly the reason I haven't made any updates because there hasn't been anything to update because my life has been so kind of what it is and I am doing my best to try and get healthy um so that I can face this thing like I feel like the issues I'm having, yes, thyroid can be affected by strongyloides, and this is just like strongyloides, and it causes calcification. So yeah, the thyroid isn't going to work like it would work normally. And the thyroid regulates sleep hormones, so of course I'm not going to sleep the same, which is going to cause, you know, imbalances as well as fatigue. So yeah, that is getting older. That could be thyroid. So the fatigue I can't say is the parasites, but I can say that. That is something that is documented as a problem in people with strong ladies. So that problem is there. And then in strong ladies, 
they have seen problems with the gallbladder area where they set up there first. So I'm wondering if, because the yellow eyes started about the same time as my liver problem. Um, so I'm wondering if they just set up shop there because the liver is really a good source of nutrients for them. And so I'm wondering if um, part of the problem uh, with my liver could be parasite related. Um, I know genetically we don't digest fats well in our family anyway, so I don't think it's all the problem, but I, when I first got the parasites, I was having pain in that area. So, and then I read about the strongyloides having that issue there. So that could be related. I'm not saying any of these are 100% related to the parasite, but I do believe the black lines in the teeth and the black lines in the nail um, are parasite because they only show up when I touch things that, that would irritate them or irritate them. Now my hairline is itchy. Like I said, my head is itchy when they, and they burrow and they bite, you know, lay their eggs in the sores and everything. So I'm still dealing with that kind of thing and that I never had before either. So why would I just have sores show up if they weren't something? So I just have stopped posting things and trying to get any more information out there because it's the same stuff now. I'm in the same place where I've been. They get long. I try something. They go away. I cause a hyperinfection. It comes back. <laughs> so I've just been doing this. So um, I'm trying to get the weight under control and the health under control and see where I land from that. And I do really want to find a cure uh, and I still want to keep trying new things but I also need to take care of the other stuff so bear with me as I try and I still I mean I'm trying new things all the time um all of these have been in the last month or so so I am trying new things but it's I'm chasing each one of them is chasing a different problem so um hopefully <laughs> you're doing better <laughs> And I also have a lot of family stuff going on in the last little while, which has kept me busy. Um, and I have some out of town people coming. So it's just going to be a little crazy for a little while. But I just want you to know, I love you. And I'm so sorry you're dealing with this. If you're watching this, I can't imagine you'd watch this unless you had the problem. And so I do... I'm still going to look at this and I'm still trying to figure it out. But I just wanted to give an update because I haven't talked about it in a while. So pray for me. I'll pray for you. <laughs> and, and hopefully God will hear our prayers and help me find a cure for this and we can all be healed because no, I don't want stomach surgery. I don't think that's going to solve anything. Although that is a theory that I have. Um, around my town, a lot of people have symptoms of this parasite. All of a sudden, everybody's getting stomach surgery. And I have a cousin who, similar symptoms, weight, can't get it off. She looks fabulous right now. And I said, what did you do? Thinking it was probably the surgery. She did do a stomach surgery. And I have noticed that um, when I had my surgery, it killed all the parasites. When I went under anesthesia, knocked them all out. But then two weeks later, I had a massive hyperinfection. However, these people are on medications for a while. Um, and I think what's going on is it knocks them out. And then as their uh, eggs would be hatching, they're taking other things that may be killing the parasite off. And so they, and also they're cutting off a lot of the leaky gut problems that they've had by doing that so the the bypassing that area um i think they're maybe assimilating more of what they were taking and killing off the parasite so it may be that i won't get a cure until maybe i try that and see what medications or what the surgery does and if it cures the parasite woohoo but i I'd rather not have surgery and figure it out so that everybody can have that option. Um, but my doctor keeps saying 1% of people who go on diets succeed. It's just 
if you get to this point, it's not worth it. Just get the surgery. And I don't want to get the surgery. <laughs> so I, I want to find a cure and get healthy on my own. And I've been able to do that with everything that God has handed me and all my kids that have had. I've been able to research and find something. So this has been really frustrating for me not to be able to find a cure. But I really believe that God will help me find a cure. Um, but at least we've got a diagnosis and at least it's documentation is getting out there. So way longer than I wanted it to be, but I just want you to know, I appreciate you. And I hope that we can work together to find a cure for this. And I thank you to the people who um, take the time to make suggestions. 90% of the time, it's something I've already tried. Um, even more than that, probably 98% of the time is something I've already tried. Um, and I may just not have updated it on my website um, that I've tried it because I haven't updated that in a long time um, and that they wouldn't want to watch all the videos to see if I've tried it. So thank you people for posting what you think would work. And then there's some people who have posted things that are patented in Japan, but I don't, I mean, in, in China, and I don't know how to get those herbs. I've, I've researched for hours trying to buy the herbs that are in that. And I, I can't find a source in the United States for them. And I don't speak Chinese, so I have not had luck finding those. So that one's kind of out until I can, somebody else can figure it out. Uh, or I can find somebody that could help me try and order it from China. But then I'm nervous I'm not getting what I would be ordering. Because I almost like literally was ready to click and order some and I just didn't feel good about it. So I didn't order it. But, um, and then there are a few things that they have suggested that I haven't tried. Um yet <laughs> but I'm put them on my list so I will do the research and figure out and then I'll try them like the other one that causes eye problems I want to try it I'm just hesitant so just thank you to those people and everybody who's taking the time to watch this and the time to make suggestions or let us know what they've tried and whether it worked or not so thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a very blessed day